Jared, uh, congratulations on the win, buddy. Uh, by you. Um, just wanted to ask, with regards to your opponent tonight, uh, how did he feel in there, and did the fight go as you expected? He certainly did. I expected Jack to do exactly what Jack does. You know, he comes in there and he tries to put his opponent away in a dominant, dramatic fashion. Um, and we, we prepared. We, you know, we were prepared for it. So um, I knew he was going to try to take me down. Take down defense was uh, on point tonight. Um, I felt I feel like I'm the superior striker, and um, I landed some nice shots. And uh, the shots were so good that, in fact, that he, uh, you know, went to the ground, and I followed up with some of the best ground and pound in the world, <laughs> and uh, got the finish. So I feel great. A big win on away territory. Um, where does that leave you in this division now? I don't care where it puts me in the division. Um, I'm in the division, so everybody better take note. Just lastly then, obviously, was a title fight coming up next week. How do you see that one going, and would you like to face the winner? Absolutely, I want to face the winner. Whoever gets that belt is who I want to fight. That's the, whole, that's the only point of being in the UFC, is to fight for UFC gold. Get that strap around your waist, get that strap around my waist, and defend it a number of, what, 16 times? I'm trying to get 16 of those little red rubies on my belt. So, um, on to the next. Yes, Jared, back here. Uh, you mentioned it before, some of the best ground and pound in the world. That's something he's taken pride in saying on multiple occasions that he feels that he has. Uh, does it give you a little something extra in that win to be able to beat him in the way that he prides himself in doing? No, because I know I was already capable of doing that. You know, I heard him say he has the ground and pound, best ground and pound in the world. And in my mind, I'm like, no, I do. Um, I've gotten actual knockouts with uh, ground and pound. And uh, <clears throat> I finished a number of people with ground and pound. So uh, I think tonight was the battle of who's got the best ground and pound. And uh, I certainly went in there and showed, showed that I have a ex exceptional ground and pound. <clears throat> best ground and pound, you know, you can say that's, you know, opinionated. You know, that's my opinion. I feel like I have better ground and pound. He can always think that he has better ground and pound, and he's entitled to that opinion. Um, <clears throat> So uh, until you guys say who has the best ground and pound, it don't matter what we say, right? Because you guys are the spectators. You're the one watching. You're the one putting the rankings by our names and all that other stuff. So um, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what anybody says. All I know is that I'm capable, and I am willing and ready to go in there and do it. You've never really been one to talk a whole lot of trash or as such, but we see a lot of fighters have success when doing it, or at least getting attention. I'm sure you don't want to change where you are, but do you perhaps change, think about the way you, you market yourself in the future? No. <laughs> Hell no. I'm not going to sell my soul for anybody or anything, you know? <clears throat> I only have one life to live, and I'm going to live it the way that I want to live it, not according to anybody else's rules or standards. And uh, <clears throat> I pride myself on that. Um, and um, <clears throat> that's about it. You know, no, I'm not going to conform. I'm not finna, again, sell myself or sell my soul. I ain't no prostitute for attention, especially. Um, and <clears throat> that's just it, man. Um, I, let my, I let my motions, I mean, I let my movements, you know what I'm saying, uh, send the messages. I don't have to talk, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna show my hand for those who are familiar with space. I'm not gonna show you my hand and let you know what I'm gonna do. You know, you're gonna have to watch. You're gonna have to study. You're gonna have to work to figure that out. I'm not finna do the job for you. You know, so I'm not going to incriminate myself. I don't talk to police. You know what I'm talking about? So uh, that's it, man. Um, I'm, I'm just going to do me. I'm going to be who I am, who be, do what I know how to do, and uh, enjoy, enjoy the ride. And final one for me. Uh, you had some ups and downs going into the UFC, but since you moved to middleweight, this feels like you've really found your stride. You've looked unstoppable in this division. Do you wish that you would have moved down earlier, and if so, when? No, I don't wish I would have moved down early. I moved down right at the right time, right when it was supposed to happen. Um, again, I feel like I'm in complete control. So um, I didn't want to go down and be like, oh, I don't want to fight these big guys anymore. No, I'm going to fight whoever's in front of me. You know, that's why I fought a heavyweight. And, uh, <clears throat> and the move down the middleweight was just a, a consequence of all the work that I was doing at the MMA lab, you know, all, burning all that fat. And doing that, uh, just working, this is just a different program 
and my body is definitely adjusted and, and leveled up. And, um, you know, the drop down to middleweight was just common sense. You know, when I fought, when I fought Dominic Reyes, I was weighing 205 two weeks prior to uh, even being in, uh, where was that at? Chile? You know, I was already 205. So it was just common sense, you know what I'm saying? Plus, those guys are tall. They're, they're big and stuff like that. So um, I'm not going to, I'm not stupid either, you know? So uh, I, may be, I may be fearless, but I'm not dumb. So <clears throat> it happened at the right time. And here I am, three wins in a row, three finishes, about to make it four. Thanks and congratulations. Thank you. Hi, Jared, just down here. Um, in your uh, Octagon interview post-fight, you, at the end you, you seem like you had a little bit of a rant. Do you feel like maybe you're underappreciated or you know, going under the radar a little bit uh, in this division? No, I wouldn't call it a rant. It was just acknowledgement, you know what I'm saying? I acknowledge anybody, uh, everybody's writing me off. You know, it's not a rant. I don't care, but I see, and I'm going to speak on it. So uh, I'm not going to just ignore people saying, Jerry's not going to win. You know, Jack is all this, and Jerry's not all that. You know, and uh, I think uh, that's just, I, you know, call it me making a statement. You know, um, I ain't no slouch. You know, I can knock out anybody, like I said. Uh, and if you people don't want to listen to it, then, um, I mean, I'm going to show you. That's about it. You said you'd like to uh, face the winner of the title fight next week. Who, you know, how do you see yourself matching up with either one of those? Same way I match up with any and everybody. You know, you stand in front of me. If you get hit, you're going to sleep. You know, what you going to do? Take me down? You can try. What you going to do? Strike with me? Let's go. I'm ready for that. You know what I'm saying? Let's have some fun. I love, I love this sport. I love doing this. I love... Get, I love... Uh, um, I love those. I love the challenge. You know, are you a better striker than me? All right then, I'm gonna ride. I'm gonna elevate myself. I'm gonna rise to that occasion, and uh, I'm gonna become the better striker. Plain and simple. Um, so, um, I forgot the question, but I hope I answered it. How how you think you'd match up with either one? Oh, yeah. Like I said, you know, anybody can get knocked out. Anybody can get submitted. You know. It's just a matter of uh, how it's going to play out. I'm not saying that I can guarantee knock out, knock out everybody at every situation. You know, that's just not life. That's just not realistic. But um, I feel that I love this sport so much, and I love doing it to the, to the point to where I'm willing to do it with anybody, you know, as long as, uh, as, long as you're uh, capable. And like I said before, the UFC only picks the people who are capable. As far as the champion and the uh, interim champion goes, how do I match up to them? I don't. I mean, that's not for me to say. You know how I match up to them. All I know is that I can knock any of them out. You know, I can win a fight against any of them. Okay, and that's it. And they can do the same. So that's just it's just common sense, right? A fight can go any way, and uh, I'm just gonna train to increase my chances of making that happen. Thank you. Hello, Jared. What up? That's on the win. Thank you. Wanted to ask about the pirate. I can see that you don't break up with that. Tell me about how the talisman made have an influence on how the fight went. Uh, how it had the fight went? Uh, I wouldn't say it had a direct influence on the fight, and I don't use this to influence fights. I don't use this to fight with. You know, I use this for myself. This is for me to elevate myself and become a better person, an ascended human being, to reach my full potential, and to just be the better person and, um, you know, reap all the benefits of being able to experience this life. You know, there's a lot of people who walk around stressing and, uh, you know, engaging in the rat race, you know. I want to separate myself from all of that, all of the BS, all the drama, anything that's not going to benefit me, I choose not to uh, engage in it. So um, things that do benefit me, like positive energy, you know what I'm saying, the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, voiding of negative energy, you know what I'm saying, reflecting negative energy or turning it into good energy, transmuting, you know what I'm saying, alchemy, and um, <clears throat> 
Abundance, which is one of the things this, uh, this thing represents, one of its metaphysical properties, it helps bring about abundance, wealth, health, prosperity. Uh, you can say that, you know, you can translate that into a UFC win if you want to, but I just use it for myself personally. Now, how that affects me in a fight, you know, if I'm happy, you know, I'm happy, um, I feel like, uh, well, anyway, I feel more connected. You know what I'm saying? I feel grounded. I feel I'm not distracted by by uh, a lot of the BS and drama. So that's one of the reasons why I use this. Okay. Uh, the first round of the fight probably was not on your fight as we talk about scorecards. Was that calm played, let's say, the first round was a part of the game plan for a five-rounder fight? To what? Uh, like, was the first round you played like a calm, you know, you weren't engaging too much, uh, making uh, too much energy out of you. So was it a part of the game plan for the five-rounder fight? No. I fought the same way I fight any and everybody. I don't come in there. I'm, I'm not in a hurry. You know what I'm saying? We got 15 to 25 minutes to, to make it happen. All it takes is one shot, a one split second to end the fight. So uh, you can't rush it, you know, especially at this level. You can't rush it. Um, we saw what happened when uh, you rush a fight. We saw what happened, what was it, John Phillips versus uh, Amendovsky? You know what I'm saying? We know John Phillips is a banger. And um, he just stood in front of him and tried to bang it out with him, rushing it. And we saw how that ended. And uh, I did that also against uh, Dominic Reyes. I was rushing it, you know? So, um, you know, I just, just have to be a, a, a more intelligent fighter when approaching, especially at the highest level of this sport. Um, I know Jack wanted to take me down, so while I'm going to rush, rush, rush towards him just to give him the takedown, that would have been completely asinine right there. So uh, on top of that, the training that I've acquired at the MMA lab has, uh, has uh, um, elevated me to a level to where I know I don't have to rush. You know, we're in a fight. You're going to have to come to me, and I'm going to come towards you. So I'm not going to just sprint towards you full head on. You know, this isn't, you know, we're not rams on the side of a mountain trying to, you know, find a mate or anything like that. So just uh, an intelligent approach. And this is going to be me in each and every one of my fights. I'm going to be intelligent. It, ain't, it may not look the same, but you better believe it's going to be an intelligent approach to fighting. I'm going to break my opponent down. I'm going to make him feel that pressure. Don't, just because I wasn't running towards him doesn't mean he didn't feel no pressure. All right? He didn't have nowhere to go. The cage got smaller and smaller, and I got bigger and bigger until he had nowhere else to go. So um, that's just the way I play the game.